Okay, we're back here live in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events. We're here at the uh, Cassandra Summit 2012, and this is where all the action's happening in big data today. And we're on the ground covering it. Uh, my co-host uh, today for this event is Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org. Who Jeff is the leading analyst in big data. Uh, Jeff, uh, what do you think? I mean, we've had some guests on. We had a nice run. Um, what's your take? Uh, I'm very impressed with the, the, the level of maturity of this community, and uh, you know, we knew the technology was maturing, but I think the community uh, really is impressing me with, you know, we talked a little bit with uh, Uri from Gigaspaces about how people are here are, are really experts. They know what they're doing, they know what they're looking for. This is not a kind of a novice. Uh, Listen, you're, if you're a noob, you shouldn't be here. Right, these people, uh, these, these attendees, uh, you know, are here for a reason, and that's to, to really, uh, find technology and partners to help them build these big data applications that are really going to be ready to, you know, ready for prime time now. Well, what I learned is, obviously the cube is, uh, the greatness of the cube is well received in the Cassandra community. Uh, thanks to DataStax for really, you know, pushing us to get here, and we believe in this, so we're here, uh, editorially tier one event in big data, uh, DataStax, uh, worth covering. Uh, putting that aside though, I really was out to understand Cassandra's use case. It's clear that it's about scaling, it's about transactions, uh, and, and being bulletproof. And, and the other thing I was trying to find out, Jeff, was the personality of this community. And you know, I guess I'll just say it's like hardcore geeks, alpha geeks, guys who pride themselves on writing clean code, um, kind of an elite force, kind of like uh, things we've experienced with Cloudera and uh, Billy, uh, Billy Bosworth, the CEO, obviously friends with Mike Olson, they're friendly, they work, compete together, work together, but it's the Mike Olsons and Billy uh, Bosworths of the world that create this kind of culture of excellence, and I'm really, really impressed by the, I don't want to say star power, but the IQ power of these communities because it's a complicated environment, it's growing very rapidly, and it's crossing the chasm. So um, the good news from my standpoint that I'm happy to report is the community's vibrant, um, the solutions are solid, they know what they want to do, they want to make it easier to use, so they're on the same path and trajectory as Hadoop, so that was a check off. Um, to me the big surprise though was an ironic um, connection with what we're doing, and that's converged infrastructure. Solid state is so game changing, and obviously we're covering on Silicon Angle and Wikibon with the work you guys are doing, and David Floyer in particular, is that solid state is more of an enabler than I even thought in this area. And that is that Cassandra is very well differentiated with solid state in such a way that people are saying that Cassandra is the ideal solution, Cassandra file system, Cassandra database for solid state. So that's a surprise. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, uh, you know, I thought uh, what, what struck me was uh, talking about around analytics, applying analytics to these big data, uh, transactional big data environments, and how important that is. And uh, you know, the idea that you're, you, you can just kind of slap on a traditional business intelligence tool on top of uh, Cassandra or any other NoSQL store or big data platform, it really isn't really isn't uh, how it works. So uh, it's really interesting to hear companies like Jasper, Soft, like Actuate, uh, and others talk about how they're reporting against multiple data sources. And, Bringing, bringing, in, uh, bringing analytics to uh, big data uh, repositories from uh, multiple sources. You know, we talked about uh, in the past at Wikibon, we, uh, we had a great peer insight with uh, Ativio and uh, Relay Technology a couple, couple weeks ago. And uh, you know, they talked about bringing together unstructured and structured data, uh, in that case to support uh, analytics around pharmaceutical investing. Um, but the whole idea that you need to find new ways to bring together different types of content from different sources. Uh, and, and we're seeing partnerships here between DataStax and JasperSoft and others uh, to do just that. So uh, to me, that would be an interesting uh, part of the day. Just some key themes that I'm seeing out here, just looking at my notes, um, I'm sure this will be you know, obviously typical in Silicon Angle fashion. Um, uh, we're uncovering the uh, signal from the noise. So you'll soon see this on most of the tech blogs, soon. You'll see headlines like this, so these are the themes that we're uncovering, uh, soon to be on other tech blogs and other environments. Obviously the relational database versus the NoSQL movement. Uh, people are trying to pit that against each other as a war, totally not the case. Uh, schema is good, schema less or less schema is where most of the action is relative to unstructured data, but ultimately it's not about one or the other, not mutually exclusive. That theme is very resonating very, very strongly. 
Uh, NoSQL is the real deal. It's moving in to a mainstream audience. You can see more structured database and relational databases around that and work in conjunction with that. We're already seeing it with Cassandra. They're working with Hadoop. Even amongst, even in amongst themselves in no, NoSQL, you've seen them work with each other. So this, the, other, the other one's tooling. The UIs, the, G, the, the, the GUIs, the frameworks are being built out to build on the robustness of Cassandra, that's a theme here. Um, and then the specialism versus general purpose, we're going to see that continue to evolve around skill sets, use cases, and, just, and from a general market perspective, you're going to see that, uh, where you're going to move from, oh, I need to hire that special guy to more of a general purpose marketplace product. And that's where the uh, innovation's going to be. I think whoever can, who can make that happen at all levels will be a winner. That's classic innovation, abstract away complexities, and you're a winner. Um, the other theme is the impact of SSDs and the multiple data centers. This is specifically highlights our research and our work to uncovering the notion of hybrid cloud is where the action's at. Not private, not public exclusively. It's in the middle, on-premise and off-prem working together, that interoperability. I think the Cassandra theme here around multiple data centers is critical. Uh, and in fact, the, one of my favorite sound bites this morning, one of them was, uh, you know, SSD is close to a silver bullet as you're ever going to see. That came from Jonathan Ellis classic soundbite, and finally the theme here is, this is all about developers, developers, developers. The, we are living in a, in a renaissance of developers again, a continuing cycle of innovation. Um, I'm excited to see that, and this comes back down to the specialism. The developer communities are, are now growing up, open source communities now grown up, the younger developers are coming in, a lot of mentorship. We heard Adrian at Netflix talk about the evolution of building on Amazon. He's doing a demo standing up 24 node cluster and firing the chaos monkey at it. This is where it's at. People are going to continue to build their business on Amazon and then instead of having a fail on Re-Architect, you're going to see best practices around these kinds of bulletproof databases. So these are the themes. Developers, entrepreneurship is a, a part of it. So those are my core notes so far and we've got some more interviews to do. Um, you know, I, mean, I just, just want to comment on the, you know, the special versus uh, general. I mean, I think that's really, uh, really dead on. Uh, you know, the one thing from a technology perspective that we see data stacks do, their, their enterprise platform brings together not just Cassandra, but Hadoop and Solar. And the idea is you're not going to, you don't want to deploy three clusters to do three different jobs when you can deploy one cluster and do multiple types of jobs on, on that one, one system. Um, so that's, you know, Cassandra, uh, data stack has taken that approach by bringing the three of those together. Uh, and then we're seeing you know, similar approaches uh, with Hortonworks and, their, and the YARN uh, project, which is essentially next generation MapReduce, uh, applying new types of processing techniques besides MapReduce. So you can do some real-time analytics, you can do some graph analytics, uh, and different types of workloads within new environments. So uh, you know, I think you're, you're absolutely right, and I think we need, we need to see these applications, or I should say these big data platforms continue to uh, evolve. Uh, rather than uh, focus on just one special use case. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's, like, it's like the way I would look at an operating system, right? There's subsystems within an overall operating environment. And I think you, know, you brought up Hortonworks as a great example. You know, it was Cloud Air was the only horse in the race in big data. In comes Hortonworks. But what's interesting about the marketplace that we're seeing here in the conversations about Cassandra is clear that the Hortonworks business model is actually set up pretty nicely because what you got Billy talking about and some of the key folks at DataStacks talking about is that I want to bring the Cassandra file system in. I want to sit and work on top of Hadoop. I don't want to have to lock out a Hadoop implementation. I want to manage the data and still work through Hadoop. That actually talks about some of the benefits that Hortonworks doing and kind of puts Cloudera directly frontal against Cassandra. So DataStacks and Cloudera, where Hortonworks is kind of like this Switzerland. So interesting dynamics. And you know, Pat Gelsinger said on theCUBE when he was still at EMC that he thinks that there can't be a red hat of big data uh, of Hadoop and that that's a, just a different dynamics in this marketplace. So again, that's something that we're following. And what do you think about that? I mean, you know, does that change the landscape? Is Cloudera going up against data stacks? That's, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought of it that way, but you know, as your, I mean, I think there's a clear there's going to be a clear competition. I or mean, is data sets going up against Cloudera? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's how you word it. Right, I guess. I mean, Cloudera is obviously doing well right now, financially. Um, their heads down. They're, you know, I talked to the folks over there. They're constantly busy. I just saw um, Mike Olson and some of the folks over there. And again, they're cranking out. They're so busy, they don't even have to lift their time to lift their head up. Right. Well, look, 
they, they built a great company. Uh, they kind of had a, a two-year head start on this market. Um, you know, like I said, they built a good company. They've got a pretty stable revenue model now. Um, so it's clear that they're doing very well. Um, but what I think is interesting, you know, as we, as we talked about, uh, the ability to do to run multiple workloads in your Hadoop environment, whereas Hadoop, Hadoop can't just become another silo. Uh, because if it does, it defeats the whole purpose of, of big data, which is bringing multiple sources, large volumes of data together. Um, so that's why I, I like what Datastax is doing with their approach. Um, I like what Hortonworks is doing uh, with their approach, uh, bringing together uh, you know, multiple, multiple areas, uh, multiple data sources internally to Hadoop, rather than uh, kind of creating siloed uh, deployments, SQL here, Hadoop here, something there. So, you know. You mentioned, models, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned, um, Hortonworks, I talked about Cloudera. You, uh, this is a startup ecosystem developing. Squirrel, S-Q-R-L-L, -L, I guess it's called. Um, you mentioned Hadapt. Talk about Hadapt, what do you like about Hadapt? Well, what's interesting there, and again, this, this again, speaks to the same, same issue. Uh, you don't want to have siloed data platforms all around your enterprise. Uh, so Hadapt is working on kind of integrating native uh, SQL into Hadoop environments. So, the idea is you don't have to move data between your MPP data warehouse and your Hadoop cluster. You can do it all on one uh, one platform. So you know, in theory, I really uh, I think that is a is a, a winning approach. Uh, but from a technical perspective, it's obviously a challenging. Uh, I mean, there's a reason people, no one else has really uh, built that kind of platform yet. Uh, so you know, from my perspective, I think we will get to that point where uh, there is a more standardized all-purpose big data platform. Uh, we're seeing different, different companies take different approaches to it. Adapt takes their approach, DataStax is theirs, Hortonworks and others, so. What do you think of uh, Amazon's, uh, the presentation from Adrian from Netflix? Obviously, you know, cloud providers, he came on record and was very candid, great interview, tech athlete, the ideal cube guest, we love guys like him. Um, very cool guy, he, he can handle himself. Um, he, but he did admit, you know, that they do only have one cloud provider, that's Amazon. Do you see that as a risk for a big data provider? Do you think that there, there should be some fault tolerance, some high availability with, with other cloud services? Well, I mean, certainly you should always have a backup plan. Does that mean you need a, a completely separate provider? I mean, uh, he, he did talk about uh, the ability to uh, kind of separate your workflows and separate uh, geographically. Uh, back up on, you know, it's got the East Coast, it's got the West Coast. Uh, so you can do that with one provider. You know, should you put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak? I mean, we're getting to the point where, you know, Amazon was kind of the only only game in town, really. It kind of, kind of really made this whole idea of public cloud uh, viable and real. Um, you know, to the extent that we see that ecosystem grow, uh, you know, there will be opportunity to spread the risk, so to speak. Um, the thing with, the thing with, Amazon is that whenever they do have a glitch, if you want to call it that, a, a down, some downtime, it's you know broadcast, it's on the front page of the New York Times. Uh, but overall, it's a very stable environment. So um, I think some, to some degree, that's a little bit overblown. But yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's worth thinking about in terms of uh, you know, your backup options. Well, we got a uh, next guest coming in who's the co-founder of Datastacks. We're going to um, sit down with Matt. Um, my take on this is simply this. I think Cassandra is an ecosystem that's dynamic. Uh, it's underhyped relative to other environments. Um, it's a set of alpha geeks with the personalities, they're DevOps guys. There are a lot of more DevOps than I thought. Um, clearly more scalability mindset. Um, when I used to be a coder, it was like, you know, the purists, guys who can get down and, you know, write the shortest number of lines of code. They not, they really take pride in their coding. They're mostly, a lot of DevOps guys are doing cutting edge work. At the same time, they have to deliver on production. One of the criticisms we heard about Cassandra that I think that they're really addressed over the past year from what we've been hearing here in the hallways is they've been getting dinged in the production environment, but there's a lot of disconnects around the data that we've seen. I've uh, captured in that area, and that is that you know, people, the documentation has been poor, as noted by their own people, and that's getting better, but it's hard to work with. So it's kind of like you know, HBase and other environments, it's really difficult to work with. Mongo has had great success because of its usability, but I think in this environment, Cassandra got dinged. Now what I'm hearing is that they're going to get better than that. Um, the other take is, I think they really have an opportunity. They're, again, underhyped. What I would recommend uh, for data stacks and other people in the Cassandra community is rally together, better market yourselves. 
The community is uh, very, very relevant, but the marketing is just, I don't know what you do about that. I think it's more of a solidarity issue. Honestly, there's no frowns, no one's really, you know, get down here, people got to spring to their step, Jeff. I've been looking at the hallways. It's cool, I mean, Cassandra's a cool environment. But again, they got some, you know, they got some, if they're the NASCAR car, they got a slingshot on the next turn and move out in front because Hadoop is just owning the hype right now and Mongo is owning that as well. So again, you know, Billy said, Billy Bosworth said, I hate the word big data. I mean, that should be a blog post. But again, that's my, that's my take and I think it's in good shape. I wouldn't disagree with you at all. I think that's one of the challenges when you've got a, a passionate community around technology. Not always, you know, kind of the marketing aspect doesn't necessarily come natural uh, to, to people who play in this in this environment. So. Well, they got to get to get up, get above the noise. Okay, that's uh, that's our quick editorial take on so far. We will have more guests coming. Uh, right after the short break, we'll be right back with more commentary live from Cassandra 2012. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly of Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back. Sure.